Hey there, welcome to the Snakebird Podcast. My name's Josh. And I'm Steve. Together we invite you to join us. As we explore the mysteries of scripture. The realm of God. And freedom through Christ. So spread out your wings. And slither in place. Because this is Snakebird. Snakebird. Welcome Snakebirds to another episode of the podcast. It's here. It's finally here. Our first Christmas episode. So put on your comfy PJs, grab your hot chocolate, and cozy on up to the fireplace as we take time to discuss what makes Christmas. Christmas. That's right, guys. It's awesome to be with you today. It's pretty awesome, too, that we've reached this Christmas episode after a full year. And Josh and I just really want to um, start this one off super laid back and just discuss some of our favorite things about the holiday season going into it and Christmas itself and just discuss the whole thing. It's going to be pretty pretty <laughs> laid back and cool episode. Um, uh, Snakebird, shouldn't you be doing an episode about Christmas and the origin of it? <laughs> <laughs> well, chances are you're going to hear a lot of podcasts and a lot of sermons that are already going to do that. So we're just going to bring our uh, laid backness and, and let you enjoy it already. Way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think we will do a future episode on the origin of holidays and how we got them at some point. But why not just flip the format and really enjoy our time as we're in this awesome, wonderful season that we can all celebrate? Yeah, for sure. And at the end of the episode, we are going to go over the real meaning of Christmas and everything. But to start this thing off, let's discuss what we enjoy about the season, Josh. Oh, man, so much. Yeah, I have to, I'll, start, I'll go ahead and start off. Fall, one of my favorite things about fall approaching is that first brisk breeze of oh, fall. Oh, yeah. If for those of you who don't know me, I've worked the last 14 years out in the hot weather, manual labor, and we live in Texas. It gets hot. So I love feeling that first breeze blow in because that means cooler temperatures. And this year I've been truly blessed that I'm in, a, in an office now. I don't have to worry about that as much, <laughs> but it's going to be forever ingrained in my memory, just like knowing that the cooler temperatures will prevail yeah, the season. yeah. My wife, she loves to get out her weather app and see what the lows are at night because the windows are getting opened and fans are going in the windowsills. Oh, and yeah. next thing you know, there's a cool layer of frost on our blankets as we wake up. Oh, that's the perfect. Yeah, there's no <laughs> substitute for natural cool air than yeah. you know, AC. Yeah. So, yeah, that's awesome. And put on another sweatshirt. <laughs> put on another sweatshirt. I said it wrong already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and obviously seeing the, uh, the trees turn and the smells and everything mm-hmm. i just i love everything about fall yeah for sure and and of course going into the holidays some people's favorite words are pumpkin spice latte yes i don't like pumpkin so it's not as much for me it just comes out of the woodworks i mean i i swear last year i saw an oil change place <laughs> do a pumpkin spice oil change and people were just flocking to it they oh love that gosh. pumpkin spice <laughs> and the car is happy yeah the car the car loves it too fall feelings <laughs> <laughs> and this year they can wear their mask on the car as well as they go get their pumpkin spice oil change. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I saw a car with a mask the other day. Obviously a joke. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. Just reminded me. What do you think about like eggnog lattes? Uh, I've never had one. Okay. I don't think. Right. If I have, somebody gave it to me as a gift. <laughs> I didn't order it. <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't my choice. <laughs> yeah. They were like, hey, you want a coffee? And I was like, yeah. yeah. And I didn't specify. I tried it at Starbucks. It, it's I. Right. It's, it's uh, yeah. nothing to write home of. It, it only gets the vowels, no consonants. <laughs> it's I. <right. laughs> That's awesome. So, um... Another thing that uh, I enjoy personally, um, though I've had to put it on hold for a few years because of kids and whatnot, um, but I love that uh, winter is coming because that means hunting season approaches. Oh, yeah. And that's a big, you know, been a big part of my life growing up. And my son's about at the age that I can start enjoying that with him, too. So yeah. it's another thing that's really awesome about fall in my mind. He needs a Red Rider BB gun. Yes, he does. Actually, he has one. Oh. But that actually leads us to movies. Which is my favorite Christmas movie as well, is A Christmas Story, which Josh just referenced there. Oh, yeah. The Red Rider BB gun. That's that is right. what you were referencing. I, I was, yes. Okay. I was, yeah, I got a look. I was like, is that even what you were referencing? I wish I could ramble off the whole uh, thing that he has memorized. Oh, yeah. Ralphie in the movie. But For sure. I can't. Because <laughs> he goes crazy. He's like, I want a Red Rider BB gun with that other. Yeah, you yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> this is, dude, every, every Christmas, this plays for a full 24 hours on one of the i don't know if it's tnt or whatever tbs NBA, tbs there it is yeah and i watch it every year probably like three times i love that movie. yeah 
It um everything from Scut Farkas to the tongue on the flagpole. That's right. I mean, I love every part of it. Flick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, and it brings back a sea of deja vu from my childhood. Even though I was born a little after that era, it still it still uh, brings a lot home for me. I love yeah. that one. I could. That's a quotable movie. Yes, I mean, it is. from the Bumpus Hounds to mm-hmm. you know they have to go to the Chinese place for Christmas dinner. Yeah. <laughs> fa ra 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 ra. Yeah. And, oh fudge you know yep, but i didn't that, say that word i said the, the yeah the classic yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's one of my favorites and, so, so poisoning sorry yeah. i'll keep going <laughs> yeah. yeah and then at the end where he finally gets the icicle hit him in the eye yeah. like his mom was saying yeah but it was the bb actually and he made it sound yeah. like it was the icicle yeah oh, he just, had to sell it it was so great i, I shot my eye out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's great and obviously Obviously, I love a lot of others, like the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, Home Alone Christmas. Um, yeah. In the last seven or eight years, too, with my kids, I've gotten to kind of re relive Christmas movies from when I was a kid. And I've enjoyed actually watching some of the old, like even the cartoons, the um, the nineteen set, what was it, nineteen seventy Santa Claus coming to town, okay. all of those. And so I've I've gotten to kind of relive those as my kids have been growing up. Yeah, it's been kind of in the Grinch, of like course. the stop motion. Um, I can't think of the. It's names. almost like Claire, uh, Claire, claymation, clay, yeah, clay animation. Yeah, they call them like. It's not Franklin and Bash because that was a show on TNT. But some of them are kind of creepy looking. Oh yeah. But but some of them are for whatever reason they just stick in my mind as a kid. I forgot the creators' names, but yeah, it's something like that. They're probably the same people that did Gumby. <laughs> <laughs> same same type of look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it had that really like they had iconic music. Yeah, and like Davy and Goliath. Okay. Yeah. You, you know that's another one. Yeah. Kind of the same type of filming style. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That brings me back. I know, right? And uh, The Grinch, too, and Polar Express. Those are oh, okay. two, two others. Which Grinch, though? <laughs> I like both of them, actually. Really? I like the Jim Carrey one and the cartoon. Okay, the the new cartoon or the old cartoon? The old cartoon. Okay. I didn't, know I didn't even know there was a new cartoon. There's a Benedict Cumberbatch cartoon. Okay. I don't know who that is, but... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, Sherlock or Doctor Strange. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Okay. Are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's getting I've, worse. I've heard, I've heard of Doctor Strange. <laughs> okay. But not, not up my alley, folks. That's Josh's alley. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of movies, okay... Mine might be Die Hard. Is that a Christmas movie? <laughs> it's hard to say. It's during Christmas time, that's for sure. Yeah. And then you mentioned National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, and nothing rivals some of the memories of watching that and just dying laughing. For sure. Chevy Chase, I mean, I can't always say that movie's the greatest because sometimes there's some sketchiness, but yeah. it is hilarious. And, uh, the blessing, you know, yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> Grace, she died years ago. <laughs> and then Home Alone, I've always loved that. I, I don't know if it holds up so well these days. Have you ever heard that um, Kevin grew up to be Jigsaw from the Saw series? Uh, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> he loved uh, tormenting people with his many traps in his house. <laughs> I had not heard that. Yeah. That's kind of funny. Apparently, Bacoli Culkin was on board with it going, yeah, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm owning this. <clears throat> yeah. That's funny. Uh, the Muppets Christmas Carol. Like, really, really uh, great adaptation of Charles Dickens' story. Yeah. And um, I was listening to somebody talk about this the other day, like, my cocaine. <laughs> you have to say it that way. <laughs> but apparently he played it so well. He didn't act like he was acting with Muppets. He played it like he was acting with humans. And he really sold that that um, performance as Ebenezer Scrooge. That's so awesome. I, I thought I, it was... I will take your word for it. I never okay. saw it. You've never seen The Muppets Christmas Carol? Nope. Let's stop the recording right now. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like I'm deprived because it sounds like it was a good one. No, it's it's a pretty good adaptation. I mean, yeah. I think it's better than some of the other ones. We'll put it on the list this year. Yeah. We'll watch it with the kids. Oh, that'd be fun. And now, is it kid-friendly? Yes, okay. Muppets. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's some cartoons these days. So. Oh, yeah. No, this, <laughs> this was older. Um, uh, White Christmas, I got to go a little nostalgic. Yeah. Because uh, I just... 
I don't know. I There's parts of that movie that get a little long in the tooth to me because they start to have all the musical stuff and you're kind of like, okay, get to the story, get to the story. Yeah. But it's just fun. And I think I try to go at least um, once every couple of years where I get to see it. And I, I can't help but talk about the gospel in uh, It's a Wonderful Life because that's a long movie as well. But just the um, the way that it comes back and how... Uh, even though theologically it's a little strange with the the angel gets his wings and you know <laughs> there's <laughs> but, always going to be some of that <laughs> oh yeah but coming in and just telling that beautiful beautiful story so those are definitely some of my favorite Christmas movies right on right on you got any more is that it that's all the movies I have dare we talk about Christmas music Josh I think we should yeah okay. This might be a terrible blow for some of you to find out, but um, I really dislike Christmas music. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a Scrooge, but even grew, growing up, all of my friends, it was kind of a joke that when I heard it and we would hear it like going through Walmart or something, they would see a, like a, a red vein pop up on my head and I'd start oh, to boil. Yeah. It was it was just a joke. But I think I'm mellowed out as I've gotten older because I've had kids and mm-hmm. I enjoy watching them sing it and, and you know, Christmas music, whatever. Yeah. But the, the only Christmas music that really irks me nowadays, I think, is when popular artists do rocked out or super modern versions of Christmas songs. Oh, okay. Like, I, I, I can't even listen to it. <laughs> So yeah, I'm not a Scrooge, guys, but I'm probably going to hand this one to Josh because I don't like Christmas music for the most part. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Man, I, I've i come across, like, I don't know, I guess the word evolution might be the right one or the wrong one. I'm not sure. I've just, I've gone through so many different stages of loving different types of Christ, Christmas music. Yeah. Because uh, I like some of the Christian covers, you know. Uh, Chris Rice is a Christian piano player who does some beautiful music. Um, for me, if I had to say I had a favorite Christmas song, it'd definitely be Carol of the Bells. Okay. Because I just feel like that's so beautiful. But I also, <laughs> one of my favorite things is when somebody takes and makes a Christmas song a little <laughs> bit rocked out or a little different, brings a different uh, feel to it, like... Family Force 5 is a band who I really like, and they've done some random things with Christmas music. It just depends. Uh, <laughs> that, guys, it's the Snake Bird Podcast. Yes. We, me and Josh are not the same person. <laughs> yeah. Um, Reliant K, do you know who they are? Uh, yeah, I do. So they had um, uh, Deck the Halls or whatever. Yeah, and it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you seem so thrilled. Oh, I loved it. What about the Trans-Siberian Orchestra? I do like that. Okay. Okay, and, and it just, it's hit or miss with me. Yeah. One will set me off, and the other one, I'm like, yeah, it's all right. So there have been years where I could start playing Christmas music in July, and it wouldn't bug me, yes. but now I'm like a week before Christmas person, okay. and that's about all I can handle. Yeah. Because if they start playing it, you know, right after Thanksgiving, I'm like, ah, oh, it's a little soon. I can I can deal, and I kind of enjoy even, I would dare to say, the introduction of Christmas festivities in the beginning of November. Yeah, okay. I can. Okay. Now, the Christmas music, that's just a whole other monster. I don't like it any time of the year. But this, you know, Christmas <laughs> festivities, the introduction, yeah. is, is okay for me. Now, I don't get, you know, some people get really irritated for seeing the uh, the lights up too early. Yeah. And that doesn't really bother me. Yeah, so. okay. I, I'd say the introduction about November is fine. Maybe yeah. if you're if you're into October, you're pushing it. Yeah. Don't do not do it on Hallow's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> that's the nightmare before christmas there, right? yeah which is i guess a christmas movie yeah like die hard yeah that was that was forbidden in our house growing up for a little while i never saw that one either I, honestly i don't need nightmares no, at all yeah. <laughs> but some people love that kind of movie so i understand yeah yeah i mean that's that's about all i got to say about that okay <laughs> awesome um what about what about um, uh, the dining of, of the holidays, Josh? You got oh. you got a favorite food, favorite meal? Yes. Okay. So this goes back, and and I'm gonna wrap this into my favorite memory. How's that? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So one of my favorite memories um, for us as a family was we started to have this tradition where we would get up. And maybe start making uh, like a lunch. Like my dad would be usually the the cook or the chef. And so we'd make a cool breakfast, like 
uh, cinnamon rolls or something really neat. And then typically we'd go to the movies That's and cool. go out after we'd open presents or whatever. And we'd go to the movies and then we'd come back and he would make prime rib. Oh man. And we would just enjoy that and um, sit and watch basketball or what, what, whatever was on, you know, It's a Wonderful Life, something like that. And we would just sit there and just enjoy. And, and then, of course, you'd have it for the next few days. Or um, lately, uh, around Christmas, I make, like, it's called Nacho Grandma's Banana Pudding. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> so those are, those are definitely some of my favorites. That's awesome. Well, I, I enjoy just basically having Thanksgiving all over again. Oh, okay. With Christmas dinner and um, just a little Christmas spice and flair to it. Yeah. I just I, I love the, the the turkey, the dressing, the whole. We kind of uh, growing up did that sort of thing. Okay. But now with in laws and whatnot, there's like they do like enchiladas like Mexican night Ooh, for Christmas. So yeah. or maybe it's Christmas Eve. I can't remember. But That's what's up. Yeah, it's it's kind of <laughs> funny to see the different traditions that the different families do. And, yeah. But um, just the gurgitation. I love it. Oh. <laughs> so I, I eat a lot on those meals, and it, it, it's, it's something to look forward to. <laughs> just don't add re in front of that word, and you're good. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that, I, I said the Big Dan version, so. <laughs> okay. And dessert. I can't leave dessert out. Pumpkin pie with an extremely unhealthy portion of whipped cream. <laughs> like a Leslie Nope uh, portion of yeah, whipped exactly. cream from, 30, uh, from yeah. Parks and Rec. Yeah. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you can't beat a good piece of pumpkin pie with whipped cream. Oh, man. Or pecan. Pecan, yeah. But I've got a lot of family members that just do pecan pie bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> if they're listening, I'm sorry. Uh, I have not heard a lot of, or ate a lot of good pecan pies. Yeah, I'm surprised. There's a lot of opinions out there about this. Is there? What yeah. have you heard? Okay, so store-bought pecan pie usually comes with that layer of crust and then some kind of gel. And my wife is like, I do not like the gel pecan pies. She's like, if it's going to be a pecan pie, I want it pecan throughout the whole pie. She goes, I don't want that that gooey gel in the middle. Okay. So she's very opinionated on it, and if we make it ourselves, then we have to do it You that have way. to have full saturation of pecans. Yeah, pecans mixed with the brown sugar substance, whatever it is. The whole shebang. Yeah. Well, if it's good, I'll eat it. It's usually pretty good. I'll, I'll, I'll be looking forward to a piece of that <laughs> this, this Christmas. You're going to have me some of that. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. So, do, you, do you have a favorite memory? I do. I, You know, I just have this one memory as a kid, and I was about seven or eight, and all of the family came over, and it was just like one of those Christmases that everything lined up perfect. Okay. All the family was there. It was a white Christmas, which is a very rare thing yeah. for Lubbock, Texas. And it was it was a white Christmas. All the family was there. And it was just, you know, it was one of those moments it's just hard to describe, but it was just a super ingrained memory mm. for me so yeah i mean yeah. not a lot of detail in it but yeah we i think we all we look back on just certain christmases that's just like i hope i get another one of those one of these years coming. yeah out. for sure you know what i mean i have no idea why white christmases are so appealing but it just has that flavor of like snow and and togetherness and going out and you know because if you've ever been in snow like when you're actually out in it, it's kind of miserable. Yeah, it can be for <laughs> it sure. It can be. <laughs> well, that leads me to one of my stories. And I, this is not as much Christmas time per se. It was maybe just about a week afterward. Mm -hmm. um, growing up in Flagstaff, at least during my high school years, we were supposed to be going back to school and it started to snow and it didn't stop. And so my brother and I were in charge of clearing the driveway and we would go out and we would clear the driveway and shovel it onto the side where the yard would be. Well, it snowed for eight days straight and it snowed over eight feet. Good night. <laughs> and so we had uh, piled up on the side of the driveway over six feet of snow that we were having to like launch as we shoveled that's, it. That's a and lot of snow. School got canceled for a week. It was so cool and so hard at the same time. Yeah. Because we had to keep up with it. But it was really neat. And it's it's a good memory. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, that builds character. Because for real, you would shovel and you'd look and you'd be like, I got to get back out there. The 
well, that's that's bittersweet for sure. Yeah. I know back in 2015, or as I like to refer to this incident, is the Ice Mageddon of 2015 <laughs> here in Lubbock, Texas. Yeah. We had a, a pretty big snow that shut the city down basically for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing about that one was I came home from a two-week vacation, and I got back to work, and then that snowstorm hit. Uh -huh. So I was out for a month. Wow. Yeah, and it was crazy. I mean, I got to bring my huge F-650 work truck home because it had a generator on it. And oh, I was okay. like, that's coming to my driveway because it has a generator. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, but I, man, I pulled probably 16 people out of the, you know, wow. ditches and snow that yeah. the, over those two weeks. But I'm not going to lie. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> I, lo I love blowout snowstorms. A little bit of snowmageddon. I love me some snowmageddon. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> If I if I had to deal with it every winter, I'd probably hate it. But yeah. it's kind of like the mountains. It, the reason they're so awesome to visit is because you don't live there. That yeah. So no, no I, I lived there. <laughs> it was quite a cool. <laughs> <laughs> I've always thought it would be. Yeah, right on. So, what what you got anything else, Josh? Just uh, awesome awesome memories of Christmas, the season. Yes. Okay. So favorite gift. I wanted to ask you about this, and I wanted to tell my story. Okay. So my parents, they're pretty good gift givers. Mm -hmm. And uh, one year, I'll tell two real quick. One year, um, they gave us all our Christmas gifts, or me all my Christmas gifts. And I was like, oh, this was a wonderful year. And then they said, we have one more. And they had bought me a really nice guitar. Oh, and I was nice. like, oh man, that's so cool. And it was just, it was fantastic. And I still have it. That's awesome. And um, then another year they had, uh, of course, you know, given me a lot of stuff. And I had been going to college for one semester, um, but I didn't have a car at the school. And so my dad said at the end, he goes, oh, by the way, I have one more gift. And he presented me a, like a little matchbox car. It was red. And he goes, um, I want you to have this. And I was like, hey, thank you. My dad, he was random like that. So sometimes he would just give me something out of the blue and I'd be like, all right, thank you. And he goes, you'll get the full size one of that tomorrow. And essentially oh, wow. they had lined up to buy me a used car that I could take back to school with me. So I had transportation and I was just, I was really blown away. That's and awesome. uh, it was a standard and I had one day to learn how to drive it before I had to take it back to California. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I was like... That's a tall order and a lot of grounded gears. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was quite a learning curve, but it was really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that car carried me through a lot. That's pretty cool. Well, you know, I don't know if I have per se a a particular gift that comes to mind. As far there's some things that we did, I think that I that I uh, really stick out in my memory, but not necessarily any gifts that I can think of right off the top of my yeah. head. There was uh, my, my first deer. Oh, near okay. Christmas, my dad took me out hunting, and that was a really cool uh, bonding moment. Yeah. It wasn't on Christmas, but you know, it was it was near it, and that was you know things like that are, are really would have stuck out in my head. Yeah, memories. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you this: Do you have a favorite place to visit during Christmas time? Um. Not really. No. Okay. No, I mean, we, we we just go to so many different families. Yeah. You know? different houses yeah where, where, i can tell you have one well i mean for me <laughs> like especially because lubbock's so hit and miss with mm -hmm. uh white christmases i would really like to go to places with snow like colorado or oh yeah you know mountains but i mean i guess for for us even if we're just here in town one of our favorite things to do is just go out and drive around looking at christmas lights oh yeah because that's a for lot of sure. fun so yeah yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to travel during Christmas time unless yeah, you really. Yeah, uh, we've, we've plan never really it. made a made a uh, habit of doing that unless we're visiting a family member exactly. or something. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sure that I could develop that, but I don't well, see it there's happening that. Anytime there's soon. that John Grisham story. I don't know. It, they made it into a movie called Skipping Christmas about the guy who's like, I'm not participating in any Christmas things. We're going on a cruise. And then his whole plan falls apart. <laughs> well, yeah, I have, I have heard of that. Okay. Well, isn't that, isn't that somewhat the national lampoons one too? Weren't they going to go on? No. Or, I'm, I'm thinking that might be the one I'm thinking of is the one you just mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Tim Allen and Jamie Lee Curtis. Yes. It's Tim Allen, not yeah, Chevy Chase. Not that's, Chevy Chase. that's, I have seen that. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. And the daughter's coming home and, 
anyway, yeah. they have to rush just to make it to seem like they were going to do Christmas the whole time anyway. That's right. I was yeah. mixing two movies. I have yeah. seen that. It's a pretty good one from what I remember. It, it's, it's all right. I, yeah. I, I had read the book before. I don't know why. Really? But it landed on my <laughs> on my reading list, and I'd uh, taken it in. And so, of course, then you always have the book versus the movie. Yeah, true. The age-old question of which one did it better. You know, I've, I've only been able to make like three comparisons, book versus movie, because I'd never read many books that became <laughs> movies. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. All right, well... So far, we've talked about all of our favorite things about Christmas, and I think it's it would be bad if we didn't mention the real <laughs> yeah, meaning for Christmas, definitely. especially on the Snakebird podcast. But um, I know throughout the years, we've we've probably all seen a, a shift from what the true meaning of Christmas is versus what it's become, the Hallmarky version. Mm-hmm. And uh, not that it's bad to incorporate seasonal family traditions or enjoy the the presents under the tree, all of that stuff. It's okay, but. Obviously, it's even more important to remember the very reason we have the name Christmas. Christmas. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's about Jesus. They, you've probably heard people say he is the reason for the season, and it's very true. And I I know that I have a few things to elaborate on with that idea, because um, one thing God put on my heart for this episode, which kind of took me by surprise, is just the three the three categories of people I see around this time of year. Mm-hmm. And so um, I, I can jump into that right yeah, now, Josh. Please. And Okay, so the, the three types of people I see every year is the lifers, and I've just put some names on these, the lifers, the Eastern Christmasers, and those who really don't care that much. They're just there for, you know, the food, and it doesn't mean much to them as far as the real meaning of Christmas. Yeah. And then at the end of all of what I'm going to say about this, I know I'm going to have some exhortation in Joshua too and, and encouragement, but um, the lifers, they're, they're my favorite group of people, no matter what the season is, because they're my brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus is the reason for every season, and our lives are reflections of that truth all year long, not just at Christmas, though times can be rough and we fall short and all of that stuff. Even still, we're lifers. And yes, it's okay for the lifer to participate in Christmas traditions and all of that stuff, but all of those things are not the reason for the season, for a lifer. Those things are just harmless traditions that make us feel warm, which is totally okay. And I see also a group of people around Christmas who I call the Eastern Christmasers, and as suggestive as that title may sound, it's not meant to belittle or shame, um, but actually to encourage to become a lifer because every church in America sees boosted numbers on Easter and Christmas. And what that means is that Easter and Christmas have become traditions for some people where the lifer sees tradition, the undecided has made their normal. And that can be very dangerous because Jesus doesn't call us to be undecided. He doesn't call a believer to be partially involved. And I know that church attendance is not the end all on who is truly involved or not. Mm. But we see this every year around Christmas and Easter. And, you know, I even know certain people that will never have a longing to discuss spiritual things the entire year. But when Christmas and Easter roll around, it's very accepted and traditional practice to decorate spiritual, send spiritual cards, say popular spiritual phrases regarding three kings and babies and mangers and all Mm. of those sort of things. And um, some might even post these sort of things on social media during this time of the year because it's trending. And um, it's the traditionally proper thing to do. But it's something for us all to think about, I think, because if we only come across a spiritual when it's trending, then we're only serving ourselves, not God. And it's it very well might be an indicator that we're we're embarrassed in certain crowds to be known as a believer. And I, I can't help but think of Jesus in Matthew ten thirty two through 33 say, So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. And this acknowledgement or denial of Jesus speaks to a life lived for him all year long. Um, I think of Peter's three denials of Jesus. At the moment, you would think would be the most important time to acknowledge Jesus. He denied him not once, but three times in a row, basically Mm. saying, Jesus, I don't even know who that guy is. And when the dust settled, though, Peter mourned his denial of his Savior. God's strength rose him up to push him forward with a momentum that can only be described as miraculous. And so, listener, if anything I've said in all of that makes you feel like you're going to be denied before God and it brings you down, I 
I'm sorry. It was not meant to do that. And uh, if you have walked away for a while, you're going through something emotional, um, some stuff that's caused you to dwell in a bad place, then it's it's desperately important for you to know that hope is not lost. And uh, I, I call you, I mean, I would encourage you to, to put your eyes on the reason for the season this mm-hmm. year. Um, and if I said something that brought you down, uh, it, it was meant to lead you to that same moment Peter had after his denial of Jesus, an honest realization of where you're at, and then a total surrender through Jesus that leads to breaking every chain that holds you down. So just be encouraged if that's you. Yeah, uh, we've had a funny term for those folks. Uh, we call them CEOs, uh, Christmas and Easter only. <laughs> you <laughs> nice. know? But they're out there and they interact and they engage during this time. A lot of times it's because uh, maybe a family member requests specifically, maybe the mom says, hey, come to Easter together, or come to Christmas together. And they um, come and they dress up, but it's it's that engagement that you're looking for outside of just those special times, those holiday times. And, and you're wanting to say, Hey, there's more to this relationship with God than just these two days. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. You know, that's something that's, it's kind of noticeable mm-hmm. for, for those of us who are involved on a continuous basis. Yeah. And, and churches love the influx of extra people, Oh yeah, but there's a point where it's like, Hey, we're trying to reach that person with so much more than just the story of the manger and exactly you know the three kings and things like that it's not just about numbers no, it's about exactly lives changed yeah so. and if it's that if that's the opportunity to speak to that person then they take advantage but true it's not about the numbers yeah very true and then the the third category that I see of, of people in this list is um, people who who don't really care. There, there's not a, a reason for the season of anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I found an article as I was preparing for this episode that kind of described the person that I'm talking about right here. And I'm just going to read it real quick, a little portion of it. While some take this time of year to ponder the miracle of Christ's birth, I choose to ponder the miracle of the turning of the seasonal wheel. The intrinsic connection to nature, the wonder of the never-ending balance of light and dark, the simple joy of still being alive. In a word, gratitude. I'm still here. I'm still alive. Wow, let's party. Does that mean I don't celebrate Christmas too? Oh, heck no. I love Christmas. Do I celebrate Jesus' birth at this time of year? No, but you can. Knock yourself out. We can celebrate peacefully and joyfully side by side if we can agree on one point. Jesus is not the reason for the season. He may be your reason for the season, but not the reason for the season, and not mine, and it's all still good. Wow. And when I read that, I was just like, first off, it's called Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the very reason for yeah. the season. And boy, oh boy, have I darkened this episode by even bringing some of this stuff up. But believe me, I felt uneasy as I was preparing this. But at the same time, it's what God put on my heart. It's what I see every year. And with the way things are looking like in the world today, there's never been a more important time to choose a side. Yeah. Um, as our in- outro puts it, there's never been a better time to follow the words of Jesus. Yeah. And contrary to what that article just said, Jesus is the reason for the season. That's why I said Christmas. That's that's the very reason. He's the truth, and he's the truth that sets us free. And so I, I know that, that I'm not the only one that sees that every year, and, and perhaps it's not a popular thing to talk about it. But I think it's important Yeah. because it's something that's a problem. Oh, definitely. And it makes you wonder how to breach that subject with somebody who maybe is an atheist or somebody Mm -hmm. who's anti-God, who doesn't like Merry Christmas but wants to say Happy Holidays and has that um, tension of defense going, that's not for me. Mm -hmm. Because there are people out there who just like the holiday but have, you know, they want to say Xmas. They don't want to say Christmas. and. And I would just, you know, this is one of those places that as a snake bird, you find balance, you know, because I mean, I grew up in a household that didn't want to do Santa. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents were like, that's ridiculous. We're not going to tell our our kids about Santa. Yes. And we grew up kind of having that just in our minds. And 
to a degree, I almost felt a little bit of a superiority complex going, there's no Santa. Like, you must be stupid to believe in that. Oh, yeah. But now I see the, the magic and the wonder of it for kids. And then to talk about, you know, a real Saint Nick who existed out there, who yeah. did what, uh, not the impossible, but I mean, there, you don't want to take the fun out of Christmas, Yeah. but you want to um, give every opportunity for the Christ to be in Christmas. Yes. For the the season of giving, the season of joy, the season of sharing. And then if there is that ability to introduce the reason for the season into it, talking about why we have the hope of the holidays, because, it, and I know where Christmas came from, and I, I do really think that we should do that as an episode at some point, mm-hmm. but I really believe that um, Christians should feel like if there were no Christmas, if there were no December 25th or whatever day he yeah. was born, yeah. then we would have no hope. Yes. No, and, and I I totally get that, too. It's it's not that we would say that everybody is forced to, to mm-hmm. celebrate, because like you said, December 25th is not the end all when Jesus was born. Yeah. We, it's something that we've chosen to set aside with his name as the title and mm-hmm. we just remember it and obviously there's calendar issues sometimes <laughs> it's yeah. not a big deal no. <laughs> some yeah. people like go there with that yeah. and like you said that's another episode but um yeah and i don't um i i guess it's just uh it's kind of irritating to see the militant mm-hmm. aspect of the atheism because i don't go around trying to make them celebrate jesus but yes. but don't try to make me force me to say that jesus has nothing to do with christmas <laughs> either and it's well, we can we can uh we can all get along and just not talk <laughs> if like we're that far across somebody the table. all angry like putting say don't put christ in christmas and you're like have you seen the word spelled out <laughs> that that was more of my point <laughs> yeah <laughs> perhaps a little sarcastic but yeah no yeah. And, and i get that too there's some people that uh that they don't believe and i don't deny i don't think that anyone should deny them the the joy of the holiday season or mm-hmm. anything like that but i i do uh i do think that we need to remember the uh the reason that we really celebrate it as a christian mm-hmm. yeah and without manipulation you know really just straightforward yeah versus like Isaiah 9, 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Or even some of you know the most quoted verses in the Bible, John three sixteen and 17, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And so there's just so much hope in Christmas. And, and I would uh, just, I guess as snake birds, either pray that if this is falling on maybe somebody's ears who isn't necessarily in the fold, isn't like, well, I, I celebrate Christmas because of Jesus. Maybe this is the thing that gets you thinking about it. And then if you are listening and you are a believer, maybe just take time to pray that God's message of Christ would open someone's heart this season. Yeah, absolutely. Because you never know what God is going to use as an opportunity to open the door for the gospel. That's true. And as you approach Christmas and and all of the festivities, obviously keep that in mind. Keep all of that in mind. And also enjoy yourself. Yes. Enjoy the season. Eat yourself some some pumpkin pie with whipped (laughs) cream. And and just uh, yeah, we want to encourage you guys out there and make memories and watch you know fun movies and yeah. listen to Christmas music all year round. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're I crazy, don't, I don't know no. about that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe try Josh's uh, family tradition to go to the movies. That that sounds cool. Uh, well, yeah. Well, we got COVID. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wear a mask, yeah. <laughs> or you know, go out and go sledding if you're in a snow covered area, and go dirt sledding if you're in the desert. <laughs> I just thought you said wear a mask. It'd be like Christmas dinner stinks coming back at your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> 
<laughs> but guys, yeah, seriously, we're we're so thrilled that we've made it through a year with you guys, yes. and here we are at Christmas, and uh, we can't wait to jump into uh, the next year with you. Absolutely, yeah. What a what a gift this has been. Uh, it has been. Yeah. So I I don't want to sound cliche, but it really the, has been. The Snakebird Podcast has really been a gift to both of us for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah, and we've got uh, an episode coming coming up that uh, we hope that you guys tune in for where we talk about the the future year of Snakebird. Yes. So uh, tune in for that one, and we're going to just keep this train rolling. Yeah, yeah, and if you have some favorite memories, movies, music, gifts, whatever it is, we want to hear from you on that. We'd like to maybe share some of your stories back or maybe have you share some of your stories with us. So please send us a message on Facebook or email us or call us or send a smoke signal, (laughs) send out a reindeer, whatever it needs to be, a a snow dog with a message on its neck. We'd we'd love to hear from you. That'd be awesome. We really would, guys. And hey, if you found it in your heart, uh, give us a good rating and review on on, uh, Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. That would help us out a lot. God bless us, everyone. (laughs) That would be a great (laughs) gift, Tiny Tim. (laughs) That was pretty good. That was pretty good. (laughs) So, yeah. Oh, man. Merry Christmas, Snakebird. Always remember, whatever you do. Wherever you go. No matter what life throws at you. There's never been a better time to follow the words of Jesus. Celebrate like you're saved. And be a Snakebird. Snakebird.